Hello and welcome back. In this video, I show you how to assemble the DIY pack wrapped roll top dry bag kit. So, this is the strip that has TPU on both sides. It's the plastic feeling coating. It has a bit of a different finish on each side, but it's still um, heat sealable on both sides. So, don't be confused. Now, you're going to want to cut a piece about a meter long, or 39 inches. Take this half of the buckle, put this one aside for now, slide that on there, and line up the ends, and pull it to the middle. And for now, it's helpful to put a paper clip or something. That's what we're going to start out with here. And we're going to start at the squared off end. I'm just folding it in half and making a mark on the center of this edge. And eventually this will all be heat sealed together, like that. And then this edge will be sealed together. And this will form the roll top of the dry bag, just so you know why we're doing this. So what we want to do is we want to attach this like this along here. We can't iron directly on this fabric because it has a TPU coating on both sides and it would just melt uh, and stick to the iron. So we actually have to flip everything over and iron it from this side of the blue fabric that is not coated with TPU. And if we flip this over, you can see that this uh, buckle is kind of in our way. So what we can do is rotate this like that and then just have the buckle hanging off the edge of the table here. I've got the buckle hanging down right at the edge of the table there and I'm putting that center mark right over top of the buckle there and lining up this edge of the blue fabric with the edge of the black strip. And what I didn't do is put my parchment paper underneath. And I put some weights on the fabric just to hold it in place. And I've got my iron here close by and my roller. And I'm ready to start heat sealing this together. And it'll stop moving around once I get the first little bit sealed in place. Three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and I'm just going to continue sealing this along here, making sure that it's lined up. You can use a clothes iron to do this. You just have to be careful to line up the edge with the strip that's underneath. You could feel with your fingers and make some marks along here to show you where the edge of the strip is. Not really necessary, but if you're using a, a big clothes iron, that might help you keep your ironing on top of this strip. If I didn't want permanent marks on there, I could use chalk or even a, a pencil. I'll speed up the footage so you don't have to watch me do this all the way, and then once we get close to the end, I'll show you how I'm going to finish this off. And when I get to the end here, because the iron curves up at the tip there, you can either use the iron like that, or what if it's more convenient, you can just go like this, lining it up with the end. And let's flip it over and take a look. What you want to do is manipulate it, make sure it's not lifting or peeling anywhere, run your fingernail along the the edge. I can see that I didn't weld all the way to the edge of this strip in this little section here. The rest of it looks pretty good. So I'll just go over this area again. It's better to have the iron overlap a little bit and melt a little bit of the TPU beyond the edge of the strip here. It doesn't do any damage to it, but if you leave things like that hanging out, they can get caught and it can start to peel. Flip this back over. 
And now that looks much better. It's welded all the way up to the edge and all the way along. If the fabric slips and these edges here aren't perfectly aligned anymore, it's not the end of the world. If the black strip is sticking out farther than the blue, you can just leave it. Or if the blue is sticking out farther than the black, you could just trim it off. So now that we've sealed one side of this strip, we're going to flip things around and we're going to seal this one down. But again, we can't seal directly on here, so we have to flip it over. When you're repositioning big pieces of fabric like this, be sure to move your iron away. If you imagine that this was my iron, it's very easy to forget that it's there and it's hot and you could just put your fabric on top of it by mistake and then you'll melt the fabric, or melt the TPU anyway. And I'm gonna put some weights on the fabric so it doesn't fall off the table. Okay, now that that's all sorted, I am going to seal this onto here. Again, aligning these edges. I can take out that paper clip now. I want to seal right up to the center line there. So I'm pulling, pulling everything that way so that the edge of the table is as close to the buckle as I can get it. Double checking to make sure these edges are aligned. So do you see how that has created a loop for this buckle? And it's permanently on there now. Now I can carry on sealing these together. And again, I'll speed up this footage so you don't have to sit and watch me do it. So now that's sealed on, let's make sure that it's all welded all the way along. When we manipulate it, it doesn't come apart. And we can't get a fingernail into there. So hopefully now you're starting to see how this is gonna come together. And for the next step, we are going to use this seam strip, which just has TPU on one side. The other side is just fabric. It's the same as the blue fabric, it's just black. What we'll do is start by cutting it into a more rounded shape. If you want, you can get out a coin or something and make it perfect, but I don't care that much. And also for this next step, we're going to need something rounded to drape the fabric over. This is just a scrap of lumber that I cut up. This is the one that Bruce Campbell made for me five or six years ago. I'm still using it to this day. You can also use something like this cereal bowl. It's not ideal, but it works. And you just need to make sure you have a bowl that has a bottom more like this, because you can't use something that has a bottom like this, because you need to be able to iron on here. And if, it, if there's a lip on the bottom, then that's gonna be in your way. But what you're gonna do with it is wrap some masking tape around. And you want the sticky side of the masking tape facing out. You could put some pieces like that along the sides just to hold it in place. And it's helpful to have a, a center line drawn. If I was actually going to use this, I would take a ruler or a, a tape measure or something and just drape it over here and get a bit better of a, a line along there. You can see I've done the same thing with this. It's got masking tape on here, sticky side out, and then it's just taped in place along the sides. This one actually has the center line drawn on the wood. You can see it through the tape there. Okay, now I've got this piece laid out with the two lobes facing me and the TPU side facing up and the exposed fabric facing down. And I'm gonna take my form or my bowl with the uh, tape on it and put it underneath here so that this is aligned with the long axis of this piece and these two lobes are centered. That little V shape there is centered on the center line. And what I'm gonna do to start with is take just the first five centimeters, two inches, maybe not even that much, and align it with the center line. And I'll do that with both lobes here. And try to work out any wrinkles. See there's that wrinkle there. If I pull this fabric over a bit more, I can get those wrinkles far enough away that I can start 
So just the first few centimeters are aligned. I might be able to pull this a little bit closer. There. And don't try and go any farther that way for now. Let's just get the seams started here. So we're gonna take our seam strip here, just about the first inch or two and a half centimeters. We want that to be sealing beyond the end of this slit here. And we want this to be perfectly aligned with the center line on here. If it's off to one side and we start heat sealing, then it's impossible to get it to line up without making a big wrinkle in it. So start out facing the right way. You can use the tape to help you there. And then tack that with iron. Whoops. And see the nice thing about this wooden form is that the fabric can fall away and I can have the iron sticking out sideways and it's not going to touch the fabric. A bowl works as well, um, but it drops off more gradually and so you're just a little bit more likely to touch the fabric with the iron. So even on here we can roll it. Now I didn't try to seal all the way up to the edges everywhere, I just wanted to get that end anchored in place. Now that it's welded in place, I can come back with the iron and check with my fingernail to see if there's anywhere that isn't sealed right up to the edge. Whichever edge of the iron that I'm using to creep up to the edge of the seam strip, I'm looking at it and I'm having it overhang the edge here a couple of millimeters. I'm doing that because, I don't know if you can see that in the camera there, I ironed it so long that a little bit of the TPU melted and squeezed out the, the edge there. And that's actually good. Because that means there's an excellent weld under there and when that TPU starts to squeeze out the side, you know that it's welded right up to the edge and that actually makes a little bit of a fillet in there around the edge that makes it so this can't really, nothing can catch on here. I don't try and achieve that all the way along, but it's just a sign that uh, you know you're creating a good weld. So continuing on, I know I can seal this seam strip up to here before I have to reposition the fabric on the form. If I forget and I keep going beyond here, then I'm going to be sealing this big gap into the seam and that'll create all sorts of problems. So what I find helpful sometimes is um, to bring it up to there and then actually start and work my way back towards there. And this is such a short distance that you don't really need to worry about creating a wrinkle by working back towards a spot that's welded. So I'm looking at one side at a time. I've got the iron overhanging the edge a little bit and I've already sealed the other side so I'm concentrating on this side and I'm slowly moving the iron but I don't know if you can see it in the camera but I can see a little bit of melted TPU starting to squeeze out the side and as soon as I see that I move on. I'm just rocking the iron. Now I have to remember not to go too far. And I see it squeezing out the side there. Perfect. Okay. And I'm just going to give that a roll. And it's really important to let this cool before I lift it off of the form here. It can be warm to the touch, but if it's really hot, then the TPU might start to separate from the two pieces of fabric as you do this because you're peeling it off of the masking tape and you will get little bits of tape residue on the fabric and that's okay. You can wash it off later or just leave it on if you don't care about it. It rubs off fairly easily. Now get this lined up again. That's on our center line and again I can only get a few centimeters lined up with the center line at any given time. This is on the more difficult side of things. Um, the tighter the radius of this curve, the more difficult it is to get this to line up. So this is very good practice for making a pack raft. And you will get a few little wrinkles here in the fabric, but you can iron those out. 
So in general, it's a good idea to keep the iron lined up with the seam strip because then you are much less likely to make the mistake that I just made. And that mistake is touching this TPU here with the iron. This is such a tiny spot. Just from experience, I know that that is not going to leak. But if you manage to melt, if you're not paying attention and your iron is just resting on the fabric like that, there's a really good chance that you're going to make a big melted area here. And depending on how it cools after you take the iron off, you may have breached that airtight film, in which case you can just cut a little circle of scrap fabric and seal it on there. But I know that that tiny little spot is not going to leak, so I'm not too concerned about it. You might be able to see that I went eh, maybe a tiny bit too far with my heat sealing because these two pieces are not touching there, but it's not the end of the world. So getting it lined up. And sometimes you might need to overlap them by a millimeter or so. That's not a big deal. And you might be able to see that there's a tiny wrinkle in there like that. I'm comfortable leaving it like that. Probably sort of get mashed out with, by the iron. You can see that I'm ironing very close to my finger. I've burned myself many times <laughs> while making pack rafts and things, so I don't really recommend doing that. Uh, it might be a good idea to wear a leather glove if you're going to do this. One of those things is do as I say, not as I do. And with this iron overhanging here, if I pull this down, I'm much less likely to touch the TPU with the iron. Generally, um, the way that I do this is I start by sealing, you know, pressing the iron in the middle of the seam strip along the center line. And then I'll move it over to one edge so it's either right on the edge or even overhanging a millimeter or so. And then I wait to see that TPU squeezing out the side. I don't know if you can see it, but I can. And making sure I'm not going too far. And now I'm going to come and do this far side here. So you can probably see that the side of the iron that's closest to the camera is lifted up slightly. Because it's really this far side that I'm pressing on. And as you're repositioning the fabric here, you want to keep this tail in line with the center line on your form. If it's off to one side, then that's going to create kind of a, a weird curve in the seam, so keep everything aligned. I've made this part of this dry bag more challenging than it needs to be, the curvature of it. Just so that if this is a project that you're doing because you're considering making something more complicated, like a pack raft, I wanted this to give you a, a real good idea of what it's going to be like to make a pack raft. And I can honestly say that this seam here is more difficult than a lot of the, even the pack raft curved seams. So don't let it discourage you if you're finding this difficult, because even I'm finding it difficult. Usually on a pack raft, you can get more than a couple of centimeters sealing at once. There are some spots on a pack wrap that are more difficult than this, but in general, I would say that this is, this is more difficult. So I thought I would check to see if a smaller radius works better with this particular curve. So let's find out. Again, I'm trying to keep everything aligned together. Yeah, I think this smaller form is, the radius is better for this particular curve. You can kind of force the edges to line up and then just sort of work the wrinkles out. Let's see how that goes. First doing the center 
and then moving the iron over to this edge until I start to see that TPU squeezing out the side and moving over to the other side and then I'll let it cool a little bit. See how the masking tape is holding that in place? That's really helpful. So far I'd say it's going pretty well. There's a few little wrinkles on the inside here, but that's not a big deal. The edges are either touching or very close together, so I would say that's an acceptable seam. More than acceptable, it's, I mean, it's about as good as it gets. Let's carry on. So once you understand what you're doing and why, then you can put on a podcast or some music and just kind of zone out. So you might be able to tell that you can't rush this. If you go too fast, then the welds are not going to be strong. They won't be airtight or waterproof even. So the speed that you can go is dictated by the materials. So up until now I've been doing this with the fabric draped away from me, but as I get this more and more enclosed, it starts to make more sense to have the fabric draped underneath the form and towards me. Alternatively, I could do this and flip it around. So now, I'm going to be doing the same thing, but I'm just working away from myself instead of toward myself. I'm keeping this lined up with a finished seam underneath. That keeps everything straight. And then trying to get these edges lined up with the center line. Got a few wrinkles in there, but those will iron out. So I'm doing exactly the same thing as before. It's just oriented in a different way. I meant to show you that you can actually use a regular iron for this. It's just more awkward. If you're using a form like this, you could get away with using an iron. If you're going to use a bowl, then you're going to have to be even more careful. Obviously this is a lot wider and there's more potential for you to be touching areas where you don't want to be. But as long as you keep the fabric draped down and you're cognizant of where the iron is at all times, then you can actually do this with a clothes iron. Especially if you're using the tip here, keeping this part of the iron away. Obviously this isn't hot, I'm, <laughs> I wouldn't be touching it if it was. But yeah, this is all doable with a clothes iron. All right, we're almost at the end of the curve here. You can see after about here, these are just straight lines, and then it's very easy to iron it. You don't need a curved form for that. So let's just finish off the curve here. Okay, so the curve is done, so I'm going to get rid of this form for now. The last bit is this straight stretch, which I think we can do on a board like this. The board doesn't have to be this size, it could be any size really. So I'm going to do the same sort of thing with some masking tape, sticky side out. I could just as easily use something like this, or even something smaller, it could be like that long. But what I'm going to do is put this inside the dry bag. I'm going to draw a center line on here. And now I'm going to just continue doing what I was doing before on the curve. And now that it's a straight line, it's much easier because I can just do this whole thing. And if I had a smaller 
shorter board, I would just, you know, do smaller sections at a time. So you can see that this rounded part of the end of the bag is bunched up and it's kind of getting in the way of ironing here. So if you just move it to the edge of the table like that, then you just push it down and let it hang over the edge of the table. And now this surface is nice and flat and I can iron along here. Be careful to keep this centered on the seam. It was starting to wander off to the side a little bit, so I'm getting it back on track. And on this straight, flat area, you don't necessarily have to start in the middle of the seam and then go to one side and then the other. Here I'm starting on one side with the iron completely flat and overhanging a couple millimeters, so I'm sure that I'm sealing right up to the edge of the seam. And then I'm just holding it until I see that TPU start to squeeze out the side. And then just sliding it over to the other side of the seam. So since I've already ironed the other side of the seam, I'm putting most of the pressure on along this edge of the iron. Hopefully in the camera you saw how the TPU started to melt and squeeze out the side there. And when you get close to the end here, you'll need to reposition everything to continue along the seam. So just peel the fabric off the block of wood and slide the wood farther down and just repeat the same process. Now if you're using a clothes iron, obviously you can't use a board that's too wide or the iron is going to be touching the fabric beside the seam. So you could either use a board that's the same width as the seam, or what you could do with a board that's wider than the seam like this one is, you could line everything up so that one of the edges of the seam is right along one edge of the board, and then this fabric would be underneath the seam, like that. And you would either have your hand here pushing it down, or something resting on the fabric to make sure it's pulled down like that. And then, as you're ironing, line up the far side of the iron with the far edge of the seam. So getting this set up the way that I actually want to do it, I'm just doing exactly the same thing as I did before. Getting the blue fabric lined up with the center line on the wooden block. And you can see I'm getting really close to the end here. So to make it more convenient, I'm gonna flip everything around and I'm gonna to work towards myself here. And you can see that these didn't line up perfectly. This side is slightly shorter than that side, but that's not a big deal. After I center this seam strip, I'm just using my finger to figure out where I stopped heat sealing. Just lifting it up and then obviously it's heat sealed up to there. So that's where I need to start ironing. I overlap it a little bit just to make sure there aren't any gaps. So the simplest way to finish this seam is just to cut it straight flush along here. I could put a little jog in it because these don't line up perfectly. Another option would be to end it like that and then cut a slit along the center line. Half would get sealed there, and the other half would get sealed there. Uh, I can't really think of any reason to do that, though. So I'm just going to cut it like this. And I'm just using the butt end of my iron here to seal that as close as I can to this strip without melting this. And I'll use a little binder clip to hold this out of the way. 
So here I can just use the tip of my iron to try and finish this off nicely. If I wasn't so lazy, I could move this to the edge of the board here, so this would be out of the way a little better. All right, so that's done. And if this was um, an area where I would expect a lot of tension pulling these sides apart, I would have finished this with um, something stronger than just this strip, but uh, I don't expect that, so I think this will be fine. So let's see how it worked out. These two ends, I'm just going to feed through the buckle for now, like that. And that's a dry bag. This buckle doesn't really slide off under normal loads, but if it's undone, I guess there's a chance if it's wiggling around a lot, it could just fall off. So I'm thinking it might be a good idea to add a D-ring on the end of here. So what I'm going to do is take some of the double-sided fabric, and what I'll do is make that the same width as this scrap of the seam strip. And I'll seal that on there, like that. And then, this is actually wider than that strip, so trim it down a bit. Let's see if that fits. That's pretty good like that. So now what I'll do is I will seal this little loop to the ends of these pieces here. And I'll trim off the excess after I'm done. And to finish off this loop, I'm just going to seal this like that. And I'll just slide a bit of folded up parchment paper in here so I can iron down onto it. To get that lined up more or less. And then what I'm trying to do is butt the end of this piece of double-sided fabric up to this end of double-sided fabric. This end isn't actually square, so I'll just trim it a little bit. And it's going to want to spring up when I take the iron away. I've got this ready. There we go. And I'm just sort of holding it down as it cools. And now I can trim off any excess and clean up the edges by trimming everything so it, it all lines up. So now this isn't going to slide off and I have a nice D-ring for hanging up this bag. And the final step is always to check our work. So turn the bag inside out. So now I'm going along the seam and checking with my fingernails to see if there are any spots that can lift up and anywhere that I might that might catch on something or that isn't welded properly. I'm just going to go over it with my iron from this side. Yeah, like there's a spot that needs to be ironed just a little bit along the edge there in the center. So what I'll do is I'll put this block inside the bag and find that spot again and manipulate that block so that it's under the seam. And I'll just press on it with my iron, keeping the iron lined up with the seam so that it doesn't heat up the adjacent fabric. That's done there. Just continue looking along the seam, making sure there aren't any other spots that need touching up. And you can see that there's a fair amount of scrap fabric left over if you want to make attachment points. You could heat seal attachment points to the dry bag. There's already one D-ring on it that we added, but depending on how you want to use it, you could add some attachment points. So I've just loosely rolled it up. It doesn't take up much room when not in use. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.